Okay, in this segment we're going to talk about the electrical system, the major components of the electrical system, especially the solar, the inverter, the generator, and the electrical protection elements that are incorporated into this coach. Again, this is a 2015 New Horizons 44 and a half foot unit. It's a simple operation to get on the roof, even for somebody 63 years old. Okay, we're on the roof. Um, we have four solar panels on this rig. That doesn't sound like many, but I have 1,200 watts of solar. Uh, these are Astrenergy 305 panels. They are high voltage panels. They're fairly large, they're 32 by 60 inches. So, um, you know, you're only going to get uh, four or six of them even on a large rig. You could combine them with other panels, but you have to be a little careful when you do that to match voltage and uh, current. Uh, this, this gives me more than enough solar capacity to run this entire rig. Uh, I have a residential refrigerator and these panels support that residential refrigerator very easily. There's a combiner box right here. You can see where all the lines go down through into the inside. This is number 10 wire with MC4 connectors connecting into number two wire in this, in my case, dropping down. Two is overkill. Um, four would be sufficient for these high voltage panels, but uh, you know, the cost differential is, is little. And if I ever want to change the panel layouts, then uh, I have the, the drop to do it. And you can see how neat everything is up here. This, this box here is my junction panel for my communications equipment. There's a conduit that goes directly down to the basement, goes through my utility communications cabinet just inside the door. There's a hole cut into it. So um, you don't see them yet because I'm just picking up the rig, but um, I will be running cellular antennas, Wi-Fi antennas, that sort of thing up through this, this box here. And this box is the combiner. Um, New Horizons builds their own combiners uh, and you, you know it's just a better way to do it to build your own, uh, although they're commercially available. Okay, so as part of our electrical system, I added uh, Progressive Industries electrical management system. It does surge protection, uh, it does um, all kinds of electrical management capabilities. It'll protect your, your coach from lightning strikes, that sort of thing, as well as from miswired um, electrical pedestals. This is the component here. So all your power, shore power runs through this and it monitors it, monitors it constantly. Uh, when we get inside, I'll show you the control panel, uh, which is very useful. This is the hardwired version. There is a, um, um, a separate one that you can hang just on the pedestal, a portable version. I prefer the hardwired version because of the control panel and because you don't forget to put it on. Uh, when you're building a new rig, it's easy to integrate the hardwired version. If you're retrofitting, then you could use the portable version. Um, it does come with a lock, the portable version, so you can lock it to the pedestal if you're worried about that. But the, the, the hardwired version is definitely preferred if you can do it. Okay, this is the interior panel for the Progressive, and you can see as it goes through, it shows line one, which is the first leg of the 50 amp service, it shows the voltage, and it shows the current load on that, how many amps. So 60 hertz, no, no errors, line one, 117 volts, 12 amps current load, and then it goes to line two and it shows the same thing, the voltage, the amperage, and it goes back and cycles through. So this is the interior panel. Now this has a bypass on it, so you can, if there's something that goes wrong with the progressive, you can take it out of the circuit simply by pushing this switch here. Um, so you have the best of both worlds. The, the reason I like this inside is because you can figure out what your electrical loads are, which is important when you're boondocking. You can see each leg of service, how much 120 volt you're using, and thus how much your inverter load is gonna be when you turn your inverter on. So you can make a decision about what to turn on and what to turn off. Okay, coming to the front of the coach, we have the inverter here. This is the disconnect for the inverter. It goes to the battery bank. 
and this is the solar controller back back in the back so so the the power from the roof that's, that's being generated by the solar panels comes down through here through the breakers into the solar controller and it converts it to 12 volts and sends it down to the battery bank when we want to utilize that power from the battery bank we use the inverter here this is a hybrid inverter a 3000 watt hybrid inverter it's a magnum uh, product which is the inverter I prefer it's pure sine wave and when I say it's hybrid what that means is it can take and synchronize power between the shore power cord so if you're on a 30 amp shore power cord and you run out of you, you run out of power it will automatically supply power from the battery if you have it set that way so if you're a 50 amp coach like this is you have a lot of high hydro appliances in there on a 30 amp service you might not have enough power to run your microwave and some of the other stuff you want to have on so when you turn on your microwave this will synchronize the power and supply the additional power needed to run the microwave it won't flip a breaker and that sort of thing like you normally see if you didn't have a hybrid inverter like this this cost a couple hundred dollars more than the comparable 2800 inverter it's well worth the money even though you wouldn't use it every day that capability every day this also has a transfer switch in it automatic transfer switch and a, and a 125 amp battery charger uh, so you use this to charge your battery bank when you're on shore power uh, and it'll automatically switch over like a UPS system uninterruptible power supply system um, we leave ours in standby all the time so that if shore, if shore power goes down we automatically still keep power the TV doesn't even flicker it just keeps running okay here we have the battery bank uh, again it's located on the um, opposite side that it normally would be to kind of offload the weight from the street side where the big kitchen slide is which is very heavy these are AGM batteries they're full river batteries they're L16 size you can see they're very tall yet they have the same footprint as a normal battery like a Trojan T105 would have the advantage of that is that you can fit more of them in uh, this space in here your footprint space is more valuable than the height uh, there's plenty of height in here since these are AGM batteries they never need servicing you don't have to put water in them you don't have to inspect them um, although it's wise to check the tightness of the lugs every couple of months because they do tend to work loose again you can see how neat everything is wired um, New Horizons does a very nice wiring job I had them put this stuff in even though I do this type of work myself I had them do it all um, they, they do just as good a job as I would do myself that's pretty much all there is to say about the batteries um, these full river batteries are equivalent to a lifeline battery they carry the same warranty as a lifeline uh, and they're about um, one-third to one-half the price so it, to me it was a decision even though I've used lifelines before it was a decision on, based on the, the cost uh, these have a very good reputation in the industry I've not used them myself before uh, but I'm confident that they'll perform as well as a lifeline will okay you'll notice something a little different on this coach there's a power inlet up here this is a twist lock power shore cord 50 amp service um, and and I have this up here in addition to the one at the back because this is a longer coach and sometimes you get into a park where the pedestal is located in a funny place and so I want the option of just being able to pull out another power cord and not have to add an extension to the um, existing 50 amp cord. Now, the, the, I have the power cord reel that you'll see in a minute uh, for my main shore power service, and that has a 32 amp line on it, which is a lot longer than most of the power cord uh, reels. But sometimes you just need this extra one. There's an automatic transfer switch that switches between the rear and here so whichever one has power is the one that will feed through to the uh, load centers if we step back here to the rear this is the main shore power cord 50 amp on a power reel again 32 feet of it so it's a little bit extra um, it's easy to pull in you simply press the button and it and it comes in 
the, the advantage of this is that you don't have to store it in your main compartment. You don't have to handle it. You don't have to drag it around. You don't have the weight. So it, it's a very nice facility. Um, it's, it's not a cheap option. It's, it's under $1,000, though. To me, it's worth it um, rather than lugging around the power cords. And you get a little bit of extra um, length on it. There's something a little bit different about this rig. As, as I've said before, I do have a generator on here. It's an LP generator, an Onan 5500. And it's back under the living room behind the rear axles, uh, suspended from the uh, floor, from the frame. The reason why it's back here is it offsets some of the pin weight. It gets it out of the way. Um, so you have extra storage up front that you don't normally have. Um, it's still fully serviceable. You can sit under there and pull the panels off and do all your servicing as you normally would. It's not so far back as to be a danger to be um, scrape on the ground or anything in a, in a dip. You can see it's well protected. Um, and it's just a good way to do it. I was hesitant to do this um, because I wasn't sure that, frankly, that it would be quiet enough. If you're sitting in the living room watching TV and your generator's running, are, it, are you going to be able to hear it? Um, but it's surprisingly quiet. You, you really don't hear it at all in the living room. Um, I was also concerned about vibration because it is suspended from the frame elements. Um, but it has dampers built into it just as it does when you put it up front. And you really don't, you don't feel any vibration at all. So it, it's kind of an ideal situation. You'll notice it's oriented towards the right side of the rig, again, to offset some of the weight from the kitchen slide, which is the heaviest slide. Okay, in here, we're looking at the solar controller panel, remote panel, and the Magnum inverter remote panel. Okay, the Magnum panel allows you to control everything about the inverter, see all the information on it. Um, in my case, I have a trimetric for a battery monitor. I do not have the BMK for the Magnum inverter. Uh, I just prefer the dedicated battery monitor with the trimetric, it, it, and it works out to be a little bit cheaper, but I didn't do it for the money. I did it because we like the dedicated uh, battery monitor. So uh, if you have an automatic generator start, you can do all that from here. Um, we start our generator from the central control panel. Okay, on the, on the midnight solar controller, you, you have all your data here about how much solar you're getting in. Um, you can also connect your PC to this. Um, we, we, we have a router up here and we have a dedicated Ethernet line running to the router to uh, manage the solar, uh, or at least to see what the, the da current data is. So between these three instruments, you know everything electrical. With these four instruments, you know everything electrical that's going on in your coach. Um, and being able to see all the data allows you to manage your coach better. Uh, it, it can be a little bit daunting for most people that are not electrically oriented, but it's pretty easy to learn it, and you learn one thing at a time, and, and so you, know, you can learn a lot about your, your living habits and your coach that way.